All right. Um, thanks to those who have joined us today. Um, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary of the Great Vic Bike Ride. Cannot believe it's been 40 years since we did our first one and we are bringing it back to where it originally started um, in Wodonga. And instead of finishing in Melbourne like it did 40 years ago, we're finishing up as close as we could get to Melbourne, which is Hills Bill. Um, my name is Chelsea. I am the uh, communities coordinator here at the Great Vic Bike Ride. So one of my jobs um, and most rewarding jobs is working with the schools um, to get your students on board. So you'll see me around the place and I've done it for the last couple of years. Um, but before we just jump into it, I did want to just acknowledge the traditional owners um, of the land that we are on, the people of the Kulin nation and um, yeah, just acknowledging the elders um, past, present and emerging. Um, and so yeah, today's um, presentation is purely just to give you a recap of what to expect for the Great Vic Bike Ride. If you're um, new to the Great Vic Bike Ride, um, yeah, this is going to be an awesome information session for you to kind of know what to expect um, and kind of get an understanding of what the day in the life is for our students um, and teachers coming on board. Um, if you are a returning school, there'll be um, some of it will be very familiar to you, um, but we will also be running through our route uh, today as well. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, just let us know. Otherwise, there'll be some um, contact details at the end of this um, session where you'll be able to either email or phone us um, after the session. So the team. So the Great Big Bike Ride, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Um, so like I mentioned, I'm Chelsea, I'm the uh, communities coordinator who you'll particularly be dealing with. Um, but not only behind myself, I'm part of the events team, but there are five other um, amazing event team members that put on this show. Um, so they look after the route operations, the site operations, um, as well as yeah, our volunteers too, and including the transport of how you guys get to and from event um, and in all in between. Um, but even, you know, just us um, five event team, um, we do have 20 volunteer team leaders. Um, they have been doing this longer than some of our staff have been around. So they know the event um, off the, like the back of their hand um, and without their help and their leadership on the event, um, we truly couldn't make this um, event possible. And under those 20 volunteer team leaders, we also have 200, even sometimes even more than that, volunteers um, that help from catering to to being marshals on the road, um, to just being support on the campsite and also on the road as well. So it's a huge operation. Um, and yeah, it's definitely something that we couldn't um, do without our amazing volunteers. So the Great Vic Bike Ride is simply more than a bike ride. Um, it really is the ultimate um, school camp and it's a pretty unique school camp. Um, we, what I'll go through in a moment, um, but we do provide all the support um, so we can, so you teachers can just really focus on um, the education and development side of your students and we kind of take care of the logistics for you. Um, but in terms of your students and what they're going to experience, um, obviously they're going to learn um, and improve their bike skills. So, you know, just learning the basic maintenance of their bike, as well as, you know, what it means to be riding in a bunch and looking after each other. Um, um, and yeah, just what it means to be, have a challenge on the bike, I guess. Um, another thing as well is life skills. Um, the Great Vic Bike Ride you'll see through this presentation is pretty unique. Um, you'll be, uh, the students will be mixing with a whole bunch of other schools on the bike ride, as well as other community members um, that also join the Great Vic Bike Ride. Um, you know, they're exposed to, you know, regional towns that they would have thought they would have never um you know, travelled through, as well as they'll have opportunities to um, engage in our, you know, talent show that we have every year. And um, it's just a really unique and great, great um, experience to see the students outside the classroom and um, really have that bonding experience. Um, and that kind of goes into the experiences side. Like I mentioned before, we are travelling, we are, yeah, a travelling town essentially by bike. So uh, the students are, you know, travelling from country town to country town. Um, and with that um, comes, you know, going through very different um, 
you know, terrains and environments as well as um, stopping off at maybe really quaint towns to really quite larger country towns. Um, there is so much to experience and offer and each town and stop um, offers something so completely different to the day before. Um, and like I mentioned before, the support wise, um, you know, Bicycle Network, we are known for our um, on-road support. Um, so we, um, yeah, really pride ourselves in uh, providing all the information and support you need. So that's including your medical support, your on-road support, um, and we work with emergency services as well through our time um, to make sure that this is a safe um and also a rewarding experience um, for everyone. So um, in the past, we've um, done a survey with the students um, to kind of get a gauge of the, the types of words that they like, would like to describe Great Vic. And in the middle here, you'll see um, yeah, a few big words coming out like challenging, rewarding and fun. Um, yeah, there's no day on Great Vic is exactly the same. So um, it's the perfect challenge, um, but yeah, rewarding experience for your students. So what's actually included? Um, more so, there's there's so much. Like I mentioned, um, we are a big operation and our biggest thing is we take care of all the stress so that um, our schools can really focus on just writing every day and the teachers can focus on the education and development side. Um, so in terms of... Um, event we have heaps of um, online preparation tools on our website um, that you can browse through our website and just get familiar with it has all the information you need there um, as well as our on, on route support so what that looks like is we have our rest stops um, we make sure that we put them in um, every 25 kilometers and no more than that just to make sure everyone's well rested and ready to go for their next leg um, but we also have marshals in place to make sure everyone's um, safe and sound and that goes hand in hand with our route signage so um, you don't need to be worried about having a map up and pointing in the right direction for your students we'll have all the appropriate signage um, outlined on the roads Again, we'll have road closures in place and traffic management where we feel like we need it. Um, you'll have on-site toilets and showers after a big day of riding. Trust me, that will be kind of a go-to post-ride. Um, we also do have on-site medical teams um, and daily entertainment too. Um, so yeah, there's honestly, after the bike ride, um, the experience doesn't stop there. There's plenty to do on site um, and we just make sure everyone's got something to do um, whether that's you want to chill or you know enjoy the afternoon however you choose um, you will also experience your own school's designated campsite area um, I will talk about this a little bit later but we like to keep everyone together as well as um, daily luggage transport so you don't have to worry about that if you're riding, you've got to lug everything with you. Um, we take care of that. So um, you can just put it on a truck in the morning, enjoy your ride and your luggage will be on the other side for you. Um, in terms of an experience side as well, um, we do also have um, local cafe like and vendors um, that come along and join us for the ride. Um, and so they join us at our campsites um, each day. So there's plenty of food to go around um, and and different vendors just to keep you interested. All of our meals are included in the prices that I'll explain a little bit later, but we also have campsite security, an outdoor cinema, um, daily rider briefings um, to keep everyone in the loop for any last minute information, as well as we'll have a separate school briefing with teachers in particular. Um, this is often before the daily rider briefing, um, just to have all the teachers together um, and we can relay any important information um, that is really relevant for the next day and it's a great safe place for anyone that wants to bring up anything of um, that is of interest. So what it looks like. So because we are a travelling town, um, this is just an example um, of Apollo Bay back in 2022. Um, and then you've got a great aerial shot on the right there, just giving you an outline of what it looks like. So as we said, it's a massive operation, but it does, it might look like a lot, but it does make sense to us. Um, so you'll see um, in the middle here, you'll see like a white mar um, catering marquee. Um, so that's essentially where we'll hold all of our dinners, breakfast, our rider briefings as well. It's a very much a community hub where people will join together for a meal. 
Um, you'll also see from this aerial shot, this is a good example where you can see there's kind of segments within the camping area. Um, so we do have um, other designated camping areas, which include your general camping, which are just essentially, yeah, your general riders, quiet camping, our women's community, um, our volunteers as well, um, and then most importantly, our schools area as well. So we like to divide it by that. Um, and you can see that there are clear passageways in between each. Um, and you might even see as well some trucks around um, the outskirts of the ovals. Um, so these are either, yeah, our toilets and our showers or our luggage trucks. Um, so we are a completely self-contained traveling town. Um, so essentially what you see here, that is all set up within the day. And then by the next day, if we took in the exact screenshot, um, it would be completely gone. So um, yeah, think about that's happening, but like for nine days. So it's a huge thing, um, but it's, it's such a unique little traveling town that we have together. So a day in the life of a rider. So this is just a typical day and um, I'll go through the route in a moment and some days may look a little bit different, but this is just from a typical day. Um, so you'll start off at the campsite. So you will wake up um, in any chosen town that we are at um, for that day. Um, the first thing you will want to do is pack your tent up. Now, whether that's students helping each other um, or, you know, looking after yourself, that's fine, but you want to immediately pack up your tent um, and then head over to the catering marquee, grab yourself breakfast. Um, we serve like a continental breakfast. Um, otherwise, if you're in a rush and you want to go to get going straight away, you can grab a quick grab and go breakfast and take it on the road with you. Um, after that, we suggest a uh, putting your luggage onto our luggage truck. So it's all loaded, ready to go. And then essentially you would meet up with your school um, either at a designated meeting spot or commonly sometimes it's the start line um, where you'll essentially start riding out together. So then you'll head on to the road and um, yeah, you'll begin riding and taking in um, the very different scene scenery around you. Um, we do like to have two to three rest stops per day. Um, our second rest stop tends to be our lunch stop. Um, and like I mentioned before, we will not put a rest stop um, further out more than 25 kilometres. We find this is a good average um, for people to kind of refuel, rest their legs a little bit before going into their um, next leg of the ride. Um, so yeah, essentially the perfect, the, the amazing part about this is, um, you know, if you're traveling through, you can stop wherever you like. You know, if you come into a quaint town, you can get off your bike and, you know, have a little rest there and regroup with the school group there. You don't necessarily have to stop at our rest stops, but they're, um, yeah, a perfect um, reminder that, yeah, everyone needs a rest. Um, and then you'll finish the day's ride in a whole new town. So from there, we suggest once you enter the new campsite, you collect your luggage from that same truck you dropped your luggage off off in the morning um, and then you set up your camp. Um, we, yeah, we suggest like all the kids helping each other to um, kind of keep their school group together. Um, and then after that, essentially you can choose whether you want to explore the new town, um, stay in at the campsite, there's plenty to do, whether that's in the campsite or out. Um, we always suggest a shower definitely. Um, and then you'll essentially go back to the catering marquee for dinner. Um, and after that, um, it's up to your school how you guys want to enjoy the evening, whether it's yeah, enjoying a movie, we have a big screen at our campsite, um, or you can call it up, um, call it a night, um, so you're ready for the next day. So the 40th anniversary route. Now, because it is our 40th anniversary, um, we are bringing you back to where we first started, which was in Wodonga. So um, our nine day uh, option is our most popular option. However, we do have a total of three options for your schools, just depending on what suits your school. And I understand there's time and loo agreements as well. So um, yeah, we've offered three different options to suit you. Um, like I said, common option is the nine days to get the full, full experience. So that is Wodonga to Hillsville with a total of 501 kilometers. Um, otherwise, you've got your five-day option um, from Wodonga to Mansfield with a total of 311 kilometres um, with an average of 77 kilometres 
per day. Um, otherwise, if you like a short and sweet little stint, um, the three day um, is from Mansfield to Hillsville. So you will be starting yeah, in um, Mansfield and then finishing up with the nine day riders in Hillsville. Um, so that's a total of 180 kilometres there. But we will break it down a little bit to each day. So essentially Wodonga, where we're first starting, um, this is a perfect uh, regional town to start in. Um, it's right close um, on the Victorian border and is known for lots of its little um, shops and um, yeah, pubs and perf um, beautiful countryside. So it's a great way to kickstart. Um, and then essentially your first day of riding will um, be heading to the stunning Myrtleford. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot of rolling hills through here. Um, and it, yeah, it's just a stunning, stunning ride there. Um, and then in day three, you'll be traveling from Myrtleford to Wangaratta. So this is a um, definitely more of a flatter ride day here. Um, it'll be very much um, enjoyable uh, for the school and the students. Um, and you'll be stopping at Millawa um, for your lunch stop. So they've got an awesome little bakery there. Um, then moving on, um, you'll actually, from day three, you'll be staying in uh, Wangaratta for two nights. So this is something a little bit different um, for returning schools because on day four, we're actually going to be doing a Wangaratta loop day. Now, um, this is sometimes a really good option because um, students uh, and just in general, our riders and also our team love a bit of a day that they can just, you know, not have to worry about packing up their tent again. So sometimes it's nice to just stay in the one spot. Um, so here we'll have the option of two routes that you can do that day. Um, otherwise, if you want to take it as a, another rest day, you're more than welcome to, but we suggest taking in all the scenes as much as you can. Um, so essentially what you'll be um, doing is you'll be heading through the Warby Ovens National Park. Um, here you'll be experiencing a few pinchy hills and um, yeah, rolling hills as well. So a bit of a combination there. Um, and essentially you'll have the option if you want to have a few extra kilometres in your legs and do the 81 kilometres and you can head towards the Winton um, wetlands as well. Otherwise you can take a shortcut and then loop back. Um, so then from here, um, we'll head to uh, Mansfield. Um, so here, this is our challenge day. So we always like to have a challenge day in here. Um, 110 kilometres is uh, one of the biggest days we've ever done on the Great Fix. So um, definitely one um, that we are going to get around and support each other through. Um, so you'll weave through the little country towns, um, yeah, with plenty of spots to take a rest um, before hitting um, Mansfield. So in Mansfield here, we'll have a rest day as well. So um, this is a big hardy town um, with plenty to offer. Um, so there's options if you're feeling adventurous, you've got Mount Buller or you could um, explore Lake Eildon. Otherwise, if you prefer to stick closer to town, there's heaps to do like, um, you know, exploring the main street, um, you know, through the local shops, activities, historical buildings. Um, there's, I think, even Mansfield Zoo's there um, and plenty of, um, like, there's an art trail as well. So there's definitely something for everything, everyone, depending on what you would like. Um, but this is the perfect spot for our rest day. Um, and then next on, you'll hit from day seven. So you'll go from Mansfield to Alexandra. So this one's definitely one to remember. Um, it is one that can be a bit of a challenge as well. Um, we are traveling uphill on this day. Um, however, you are rewarded with amazing views over Lake Ilden. Um, and then it just means you... If you go up, you must come down so you'll enjoy a downhill into Mary, uh, Marysville. Um, you know, it's a beautiful, lush um, forest and just greenery around you with, um, yeah, impressive, you know, waterfalls and um, native wildlife as well. So um, it's a beautiful day there. Um, bit of a challenge at the start, but um, so rewarding at the end. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll head... Um, from our last day, actually. So from Marysville to Hillsville, um, this is our 
final day. Um, so yeah, you'll ride through the Black Spur car free. So um, this is going to be a real unique day and what a day to end on. Um, so you're going to be riding through the twists and turns and just being just seeing lines of trees, um, yeah, lining the road in front of you. Um, it truly is going to be um, spectacular spectacular um and yes yeah, something that's going to be unforgettable especially for the last day of riding so here are our options and prices so um on the screen here you'll see um if you're interested in the uh, nine day event um it, it kicks off from um 941 dollars on early bird before jumping up to 1035 dollars um in general, um, it's about $130 a day. So that's including yeah, your all your transport, your meals, your ticket price, all of that. So we do think it is a steal. And um, yeah, we put an early bird offer um, on the screen. You'll just see down here. So our registrations open, particularly for schools, Monday the 15th of April. You might see that the general shop is open already, but we need schools to be registered on a completely different um, system. So we are opening up that on day one of term two. Um, you'll see our early bird first release does close shortly after that. Um, that is the Sunday, the 12th of May. With this is your early bird pricing plus a free 40th anniversary commemorative t-shirt. Um, but don't stress about the price because the price will stay in place until 18th of August. So you do have plenty of time um, until Sunday, the 18th of August. However, it just means that um, after the 12th of May, you won't get your um, free commemorative t-shirt. However, um, they'll most likely be up for sale on event. And I know how much the students love a bit of merch. Um, and then our final registration changes. So something to keep in mind as well um, is, you know, if someone like happens to pull out or, you know, if you need to um, add on any ride extras, we do just ask um, Friday the 25th of October. Um, we would like to know by, we understand some things happen last minute. So um, always keep us in the loop um, and we're more than happy to discuss that with you. So suitably qualified adults. Um, we just wanted to touch on this because it's an awesome way to um, yeah, get some free adults on the ride with you. Obviously we understand that Great Vic um, and just any school camp um, you know, you can have anywhere between, you know, under 10 to up to, you know, over 100 students. Um, and with that, obviously, um, supervision is extremely important. So we just wanted to highlight um, our SQA um, process. So um, an SQA is a supervising adult that is responsible for the conduct, behaviour and wellbeing of the students in the group. So depending um, on how many students you are wanting to bring to Great Vic, you can see this table on the right here. So if you are bringing 41 to 50 students, um, you are bringing, you are essentially eligible for five free um, of charge SQAs. So, um, who can be eligible to be an SQA? That is any teacher or adult member um, that is age 18 and plus of the writing group that can be considered as an SQA. Um, through the registration process um, as a ticket, um, there will be the option to select um, as an SQA. So it is up to the school um, organising teacher or what we like to call the school um, captain um, to delegate who is the SQA. Um, so yeah, it's an awesome one, like, especially if you've got like heaps of um, teachers or parents that are wanting to help. Um, yeah, it's something that, you know, teachers can go free and maybe parents pay extra to jump on board and help. So just something to consider there. And if you have any questions, um, please let us know. So registrations. So as I mentioned, at school registrations open Monday the 15th of April in term two. And um, we are using a new registration platform called Race Roster. Um, I know for the last few years, we've used a previous platform, so it's something to get used to. However, um, don't stress, we'll have a whole new registration guide to follow that will be super intuitive and easy to go with. What we do suggest is the school captains um, to register first um, and make sure you uh, add and create your group um, and by 
from there, actually sharing a unique link with the students um, for them to sign up. So this portal is a very simple portal. It's just asking for rider details, um, any additional options like your, if you need phone charging, we provide that um, as well as any transport too. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep an eye out and um, mark in your calendars. And like I said, again, any questions, please get in contact with us. We're here to help. So what to bring? As much as I do say that um, we do provide full support on the event, the only thing that we don't um, provide is essentially all your equipment. Um, so if this is a great little overview. Um, you can also download this on our website as well and share with the students. Um, but most importantly, a bike is definitely what you need. Um, make sure it's serviced prior to the event. Along with that, safety first, bring your helmet um, and any spare tools to carry with you. Um, but please note that um, we do have mechanics with us on event that travel with us. Um, so please don't um, fret if you leave it behind or you're missing something. Um, we do have our mechanics and we do have Warbies. Um, if you're new to Great Vic, it stands for we are right behind you. And essentially they are traveling um, mechanics by bike. Um, they're dressed in all yellow, very easy to um, see on the road and um, they're more than happy to help you out if there's any mechanical problems on the road. Um, a luggage bag to carry all your items. Um, we do suggest bringing, if you've got a waterproof bag, we do suggest that just because if the weather is wet, um, these bags are going on trucks with other bags as well. So um, yeah, just to keep your items safe, we suggest that if you do have it. Um, bright or noticeable clothing to ride in. So depending on your school, you might have a custom designed kit that you guys want all of your students to look the part. Um, that's amazing if you've got that. Otherwise, if you don't have that, that's totally fine too. We do just recommend wearing bright or noticeable clothing. Um, that's very easy to see on the road. Make sure um, you are uh, planned for all seasons. Um, especially wet weather clothing for riding in the rain, including a jacket and any appropriate shoes as we, yeah, like I said, we can get all types of weather. So making sure you're um, prepared for anything um, as well as um, suitable changes of clothes for footwear um, and footwear for camp and exploring town when you do arrive after your ride, um, just making sure you've got something comfortable and dry to um, change into afterwards. Another important thing is your tent and sleeping bags and other sleeping requirements like sleeping mats. Um, some students might like to share a tent um, or, yeah, uh, source their own. It's totally up to them, um, whatever works, uh, as well as a towel and your own shower item. So that's like your toiletries. Um, something about Great Vic is we are entirely uh, self-contained um, and very conscious of the environment. So we do ask that everything is supplied by yourself um, and making sure everything's um, correctly disposed of. And that leads us into our reusable cutlery. Um, so, you know, things like your cups, plates, bowls, all of that, we do ask you bring your own. Um, and then we ask riders that they wash these once done. Um, another important thing is, is emergency contact information, a battery pack to charge your phone, but we also do provide this on event for an additional charge if you forget yours or don't wanna buy one. A positive attitude is the most important thing on Great Vic. Um, it can be, yeah, like I said before, no day is the same um, and some days are quite challenging. Um, and yeah, the most important thing is getting around each other and being a team because um, it really is rewarding each day crossing the finish line and just being able to relax for the rest of the evening. And on event, you will receive your event lanyard um, and identification and bag tags. Um, this is something that we provide um, and we will uh, notify you how to best use that on event. So training. Um, so we've worked with Kate Perry for numerous years. Um, essentially, she is our school's coach, but she's also a former elite cyclist as well as she works in the sports science um, field nowadays. So um, a really reputable um, person to be you know, uh, creating these school training guides for us. Um, so these are all um, accessible on our website um, and completely free as well. So they include two plans. One that is a six week um, physical activity challenge. Otherwise, you can, can um, opt for the six-month training plan as well. Um, so this is an awesome 
uh, module if you're new to cycling, just kind of gauge through it. Um, you can take bits from it, otherwise you can follow it to a T. Um, I really like the skill sessions um, she has in there. It's a perfect way to begin training and get, especially students that, you know, have ridden a little bit, but not too much. It's a perfect way to build their skills from the start. Um, our top suggestions from Bicycle Network um, and just working with a lot of different schools and hearing about how they um, best work is we recommend kickstarting training in term three for the best experience. Um, I think our biggest thing is that school, um, that students with training, it really uh, helps them identify a goal and starting, you know, 10 weeks out, 12 weeks out, and really like they'll, if they train consistently, they will reap the benefits on Great Vic and they'll think it's super easy. So um, yeah, it's so much more than just the event, it's the pre-work as well. So there's a whole thing behind it, um, but yeah, we recommend term three. We suggest starting with skill sessions, like I said before, just to teach the basics and build confidence. Um, and then as you get closer, um, we suggest scheduling in monthly training rides and keep it consistent. So for example, this can be every third Sunday, 9 a.m. as a school group, we're starting here and we're doing um, you know, a route X, Y, and Z, um, and also set them homework as well. So whether that's doing you know, a certain amount of kilometres during the week. There's so many different ways of going around it. Um, and then also increase the distance or gradient each training ride. That's always a key one. And also Bicycle Network, we can come to your school and deliver a road safety session, whether that's before you start your training rides with your school or before you go on Great Vic. This is a great way just to give you an idea of what to expect out on the road um, and just the key um principles just to be safe too. Now, the important stuff, um, being our 40th anniversary, um, we have done this year on year um, and we are super proud of this event and um, there's so much pre-planning that goes into making this event even possible. We work with so many stakeholders like our councils, emergency services, VicPol, um, and yeah, working with a wider team to just get this on um, on the ground. So um, please be rest assured that we are experts in this field and we have been running it for 40 years and we plan on doing it for many more years to come. We do also um, have a very uh, in-depth risk assessment. Um, so if any incident were to occur, we have all the important steps from our side internally, what we need to do to keep you guys safe um, and how to incorporate our emergency services. Um, and make sure that you guys have a memorable experience, but most importantly, safety is key. Um, so please be rest assured that um, we are experts in this field. Um, and yeah, it goes, it takes a year, if not more, um, to plan just nine days. So um, yeah, it's something that we're really proud of um, and something that you should be really comfortable with. So what now? Um, now that you've kind of gotten a idea of what Great Vic is. Um, our first step is always um, attending a Great Vic Schools info night like tonight, um, just to get an idea of what to expect. Um, from here on, if you are new, we recommend you going to our Great Vic Schools website and downloading our school resource packs to get familiar. Um, this will have key dates to consider, um, how to get started as well, especially if you're new and you just don't really know where to um, start. We then suggest getting approval from your principals and registering your school from Monday the 15th of April when our registrations open. Um, after this, we recommend sending out an expression of interest to your students and teachers to join Great Vic. Now, these we have resources on our website, including yeah, ride posters, um, or you can do presentations um, to do expressions of interest. Um, and that's when we can come in as well. So you can book Bicycle Network in to hold a student parent info night at your school we do understand that um some yeah some teachers might not have all the information and sometimes it's nice to actually have someone from bicycle network represent um, and be able to answer some of the questions that you may not be able to um, answer so know that we can do that um, for free anytime that you like um and that is pretty much brings us to the end of the session. Um, so if you've got any questions, feel free to um, chime in. Um, but essentially we do also for new schools, um, please note that we do have um, 
many schools that return each year um, and have used, yeah, have been around for so many years um, that they have offered to be um, essentially school champions. So they're key contacts that if you just need um, a school contact just to kind of ask questions and maybe, you know, Bicycle Network, as much as um, we know the event on the back of our hand, but we may not know from a school, like a teacher perspective, um, sometimes it's great just to... Um, uh, yeah, pick the brains of another teacher. So we've got a list of contacts on our um, website if you do want to get in contact with another teacher and just ask how they do things like their transport or whatnot. Um, that's a really great resource to have. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you're welcome to um, contact us by email um, or phone at the bottom of the screen. Um, I will open up. Craig, did you have any questions? I know you're pretty all ahead of it. Oh, oh, good. But thanks. That was that was very comprehensive, sir. Thank you. Perfect. No worries. Thanks, Craig. Well, we'll see you soon. We'll see you, um, yeah, come November. And, um, yeah, thanks for joining us as well. And um, enjoy the rest of your night, and I'll leave you to it. No worries. Thanks a lot, Chelsea. Perfect. Thanks, yeah. Craig. Take care.